All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to open up and disassemble this HP Pavilion. This is a HP Pavilion gaming laptop model. Let's see here. It's tiny. Uh, 16-A0097NR. And the model number is really tiny, but it's right down there. All right, we're going to be using a JIS-1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, you want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Okay, so we got four going along here, and then looks like we got four going along the bottom or the front opening area. So the ones towards the back where the hinges are are much longer. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all these screws. Give me a second. All right, let's continue removing these screws. All right, these screws are pretty long. Pretty sure the ones towards the front are gonna be really short. But let's go ahead and remove those as well. Okay. There we go, make sure you don't lose them. All right, we'll see if we have to remove any of there. They have an SD card slot uh, or SD card in there. We'll see if we have to remove that. Actually, I should probably pull that out so I don't accidentally wipe it out if I format the computer. So let's pop that out. A little sand disk and an adapter. Okay. All right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to pop the bottom cover off. So let's see if this model is designed like the other ones. Usually what I do is I get my fingernails in the little gap between the bottom cover and the palm rest. And then I'll push with my thumb on the palm rest itself. Be careful not to push on the touchpad you don't want to accidentally punch that into the uh, computer All right then we're going to go along the side as well and I'm going to be careful with the keyboard area you don't want to push too hard on the keyboard but, okay we can get that side up all right so let's go ahead now um, we can go a little bit along the front here again be careful not to press on the touchpad itself there we go so oops sorry I'm going out of view but there we go, we got the whole front portion out, and as you can see, actually, we just lifted that, and it kind of just popped up on its own. Okay, the back is still a little bit stuck, so we'll just kind of keep wiggling it. I'm kind of wiggling it side to side and around. It looks like it's kind of caught here. Let's see. Usually when it gets there, I can kind of grab here, and then I'll hold something stationary here and kind of just move it side to side as I kind of pull on it, and it should hopefully unclip somewhere. There we go. All right, and there we go. So this is giving like a hard drive issue, saying that it's having a problem detecting the hard drive. So we're gonna be replacing this M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. All right, let's go ahead and also take a quick look at the inside just to see what's in here. Okay, it looks like there's a slot here for um, M.2, sorry, a P, uh, sorry, 2.5 inch SATA uh, hard drive or SSD. So this is just a piece of plastic here, so you can swap that out <clears throat> if you wanted to upgrade and add uh, uh, another SATA drive there. All right, the battery model number is right there, PG03XL. Okay, so if you need to replace the battery, there it is, um, and it's connected right here. Okay, um, this is just going to be a somewhat quick video. It looks like there's two screws here and one screw up here if you need to remove this bracket. Again, this is just a piece of plastic, but uh, let me see if I can show you this. We'll get this screw out, we'll get this screw out. Okay, and then you do have to flip this little latch here. Let me actually zoom in a little bit here. So there's this white latch, flip that up. Then you can go ahead and pull this up slightly and pull that back. And here you can see we have access to a third screw. Now we can go ahead and hopefully, yep, lift this out. And here you go, it's just a piece of plastic as you can see. And this SATA connector, it's slotted on there. So if you want, pull that off and you'll put this on a new drive. You do have to take the four screws out, two screws here and two screws here to remove this metal bracket. And then you can go ahead and put that on a SATA hard drive or SSD. All right, and let's go ahead and now drop this back in. Um, since we're not really going to do anything with that. Oops, sorry. I need to zoom back out for you guys. And we'll get these screws back in. Okay. And again, we're just doing a quick look in here because the customer just needed me to replace the SSD and then do a clean install of Windows on there for them. 
So that's all we're going to be doing. There are screws here for the battery if you need to remove that. Let me actually just take the screws out so you can see underneath, um, but we're not gonna be taking it completely out. Okay, again, keep all the screws in order. All right, there's another screw here. All right, so I think it's just those four screws holding the battery in place. We can go ahead and lift this. And I'm just gonna kind of flip it over so you can see underneath. Here you can see the touchpad, trackpad connector here. You got the keyboard connector here. These have these little flip latches to remove them. The keyboard is held in with melted plastic, so it's not an easy to replace one. Um, if you're going to replace the keyboard, you might as well get the entire keyboard assembly and then just swap. You'll have to swap the motherboard and the screen and everything over. It's going to be a pain. Um, but yeah, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the other internal components. It is a little dusty in here, so I'll clean that up as well. Uh, but I don't want to do anything too crazy with it because, again, the only issue they're having um, is the SSD. And we don't want to accidentally cause more issues with it. All right, so we got this latch flipped up. We're going to get the cable back in here. All right, there we go. Get that in. All right, you have the LCD LVDS connector here. If you're going to mess with this, make sure to disconnect the battery connector here and then open the laptop and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before messing with that. You don't want to accidentally um, have the connectors short by sometimes it'll rotate sideways or sometimes it'll just not be quite touching and then it arcs across and that can fry the thing. All right, you got this cable, flat ribbon cable or ZIF connector going underneath the motherboard and that's for the USB port up here. I don't know why it needs such a big board for that. There's probably other stuff it does, but uh, yeah, all right. You got the charge port DC jack here and that goes along and plugs in down here. You got one fan connector here, another fan connector here. Um, then we already talked about those two connectors. You got the keyboard backlight connector here with the flip latch as well. Right, two sticks of RAM. Let's go ahead and see if we can actually see what type of RAM this is. So the RAM, you pull these two tabs to the side and then it should pop up. If it doesn't, you might have to help pull it up a little bit, but there we go. And this is eight gig PC4 3200AA. So if you need to replace or upgrade the RAM, PC4 3200AA, you can put two 16 gig sticks if you want. If they have 32 gig sticks, you should be able to actually even upgrade to that if you want, all right. Uh, CPU, I'm pretty sure CPU is under here, actually. Hmm. This one's pretty crazy looking. This might actually be the GPU under here, and this might be the CPU under here. I'm not sure. But, uh, usually the GPU, I think this is the GPU because it has all these little things here where they put, like, those thermal pads on it. All right, then we got the wireless card here with the antennas underneath this plastic tab. So if you want to remove it, you would have to peel that up and then you can pull up from the tail. Don't try and pry up from the connectors on the front. All right, not really much else to show in here. Um, you do have this speaker uh, board there um, <clears throat> and it connects to the motherboard here. All right, and I think that's all I'm going to show in here. Let's go ahead and pop the... M.2 SSD out here. We got one screw. We'll take that out. All right, once you remove that screw, we should be able to pull this up slightly. So lift it up. Let's see, slowly, carefully. There we go. And then we're gonna we go and pull that back. So here you go. Um, these Intel Optane things are always failing. I don't know. Anyways, there's probably a thermal pad on the other side sticking it to this metal tray. So I'm gonna get my fingernail in there and I'm gonna pry that away from there. And we're gonna go slowly. Let's see if we can pull it from this side. Oh wow, it's stuck in there real strong. Okay, so we're gonna carefully be pulling this and pushing the metal thing away. Okay, and it's holding really strong. So I'm gonna work my way closer up here. And actually it's pulling that thermal pad. It's stuck to the SSD. So try and separate the two. There we go. And separate that. There we go. Here's the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Um, these Intel Optane SSDs are always failing. This is a 32 gig Optane with 512 gigs of flash memory. I don't know if the customer wants to go with a smaller SSD um, because I do have a 500 gig one, but yeah, let me ask them real quick and I'll be back. 
All right, so the customer decided to just go with the one terabyte. So let's go ahead and install that. We cleaned it all up. All right, and let's grab the one terabyte SSD. We've got a crucial P5 plus. All right. These SSDs have really good performance for their price. Let's go ahead and pop this in. So it goes in at an angle like this. I like to pinch both together and then we lower this down. Okay, this thing went on top, so I guess let's go ahead and put it back on top. And the main thing is there's nothing to line up here because there's no slots or notches for this to go in, so basically just line up the screw mount. All right, and then this thing just goes on top. We'll get that screw in. All right. And that's about it. Let's get the bottom cover back on and then we'll install Windows. To install Windows on an HP laptop, you usually put in the Windows USB installer and then press F9 on boot. Oops, we didn't need to zoom in that much. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get the bottom cover back on. Very simple, straightforward. Just go ahead and line it up. And then click this back in. You might have to push in, excuse me, down and also inwards at the same time. So at an angle, get those edges all clicked into place. Just like that. Make sure everything is clicked in. Perfect. All right, sounds good. All right, then we just gotta get all the screws back in and we'll start the Windows installation process. Um, that process is pretty straightforward. Just follow the on-screen prompts and everything. Um, I'm gonna actually put the SD card there just so I don't forget it, but I'm not gonna click it in. Again, I don't wanna accidentally format it. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Get all the screws back in and yeah. All right, if this video helped you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can help out that way, it would help a lot. If you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Uh, but yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and flip this thing over and then um, boot the Windows USB installer. One other thing, if you did disconnect the battery, keep in mind, um, I believe that battery also acts as the BIOS CMOS RTC real-time clock battery. So um, if you're starting it up after disconnecting the battery, there's a very good chance it's gonna take a long time for it to boot up. So don't panic, just give it some time. Um, if it hasn't booted up in about like 10 minutes, then maybe you might want to start worrying. All right, so we'll power this back on. Is it turning on? Hmm, did I unplug the battery? I don't think so. Why is it not powering up? Okay, let me get the power uh, cable real quick and then I'll be back, see you guys in a bit. All right, let's get this thing plugged in. Okay, make sure the charging light is coming on. Good, powered up. It's powering on. We'll press F9. Is the battery dead? I'm pretty sure I didn't disconnect it. You can see this light's turning on and off on its own. We're gonna press F9. There we go, change boot order. And we're selecting our um, SanDisk Cruiser Fit, Windows 10. And yeah, and then you just go through the Windows install as usual, but that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.